I really look up to, uh, had a huge impact on my life. Uh, he's my strength coach, but more importantly, the basketball team strength coach. Uh, at one point, he did squat 700 pounds, bench 550, so he's a beast in the weight room, but more importantly, he's just a beast for the Lord. Um, I'm, I'm so thankful he was my strength coach through my time at Ohio State, so please give a, a big welcome to Coach Rich. I gotta say, one of the stronger golf guys I've ever heard. So, these guys, I, I love, I love our golf team. They, they really train hard, and uh, I, I love them in the way they're, they're good at that. And, uh, Shalisa said she was here for 17 years. I didn't realize she was a prodigy. She's been here since she was seven years old. Because you can't be able to. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for in, uh, inviting me to speak today. I know you put a strength coach in a room full of athletes. The first thing we want to do is a dynamic warm-up, right? So <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do that today. But I do have a quick message for you today, and it's about God's will. And I want you to think about this question that I'm going to ask you. And, and before you answer it really quickly, I want you to think about it for a second. Do you really want to know God's will for your life? Okay, because there's a lot of people that would say absolutely want to know it. Others would say aren't so sure. But as we kind of delve into it, some people think that God hides his will from us. You know what I mean? Have you ever done the, where does God really want me to live? Spin the globe. <laughs> Am I the only one that did that? <laughs> right? Okay, that's where he wants me to live and work or... Or it's found in some traumatic, God's will is found in some traumatic experience. Um, you slip on a banana peel and you see something from Bangladesh. <laughs> you know? Or maybe even worst of all, you fear God's will. He wants you to live in a country you can't pronounce, that doesn't have indoor bathrooms. And that's a problem, right? So you, you might be fearful of, of what God's will for you is. And, and that could be a problem. It's confusing, if nothing else. But as Christians, there's two things. If we're a Christian, God does have a will for each and every one of us, right? And second, he must want us to know what it is. So we'll get into that a little bit more. But as far as God's will goes, what if I could tell you tonight? Who God wants you to marry. Would you be interested in that? Or where, what major he wanted you to have? Or what job? Or decide between houses to buy? Or, or career paths? Whatever. You can know that. God can answer that question for you specifically. And so, um, I, my wife is with us tonight. We've been here for uh, going on 13 years now. I've, I've been with Coach Mott and the basketball team since then. Before we moved here, we were at the U University of Miami, Florida. And my wife and I are both from Louisiana, so it wasn't that – I didn't think that big of a move to move to, to Miami, Florida. But I was a late guy, and all of a sudden I've got this big, huge ocean in. And we're at church one day, and we met this couple. Uh, he was a Marine officer that was stationed uh, in that area. And he had a boat. So we got to be really good friends with him and his wife. And uh, he's, he liked to kind of take us out on his boat. And, and uh, you know, we'd go out. And it was pretty cool. But I was used to lake living, not ocean living. One of the things, can you give me another picture? That I had to figure out what these were. <laughs> okay? And so... When you, when you start looking at these in the ocean and you see all that blue, you don't realize, like, what's under there. You know, so we would have to get in his boat and follow those buoys out to we got to open water, then it was on. But there were reefs and sunken mess and junk and debris everywhere. So, like, if he got his boat on the other side of those things, we were in trouble. And so they spend a lot of money dredging paths out to open water, and then they, and they have markers for you. And the more I start thinking about God's will, he sets markers for us the same way. 
and they lead to open water, which is where God's will is. And so I started, uh, you know, as, as I've, I've done this over the years, as, as I've looked at each marker as a, as a part of the process going out to, to where God's will is. And the first one that God sets for us, the very first marker, that if he's going to show you what the will, his will for you in your life is, is salvation. So the first marker of salvation is, is, is what he calls the starting point. And so... You know, why is it important that, that you have that you have salvation first? Well, it's because you're part of the family, right? And uh, in order for God to have a plan for you, you really do need to be in the family. Um, guys, that people aren't in the family may not have a plan. But uh, but so um, who does God actually want to be in his family? And that's that's a, something that we have to deal with. All the time as we're talking to non-Christians too, is the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Uh, he's patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So in uh, 1 Timothy, this is good and pleases God, uh, our Savior, who wants all men kind to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So that's the very first marker that that God is, is kind of pointing us to as we get into the, uh, the open water. The second one is to be spirit-filled. And we call that the being consumed principle. So when I think about that, I think about Peter. You guys know some of the stories of the Bible about Peter. Peter was, he was the rock for Jesus, right? He had his ups and downs with, uh, with, with Jesus. There were times when this dude walked on water. He got out the boat and walked on water. That's pretty amazing to me. But also, he denied Christ three times. Remember that? That's another story. But So he's had his ups and downs, but God wants us to be spirit-led. Um, and I think that as, as we, as I think about my life, most, if not all, of my problems can be solved by simply walking in the spirit. If you'll do that every day, I promise you, 99% of your problems will go away. So, um, and how do you do that? Make the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what is the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Spirit. So I think, it, really, what it comes down to, and you could substitute wine for just about whatever thing you want to substitute it for, but basically it is... Don't, let, don't be consumed with anything else in your life except for Christ. If, if you're consumed with Christ, then you are well on the road to, uh, to where you need to be. Okay? And so, uh, sancti uh, uh, salvation and then spirit-filled. And then they, you know how these guys, we always love to make them all the same letter, right? Sanctification. Okay? Which is priority of purity. And so... Um, this is the will of God even for your sanctification. And so sanctification is defined as the act or process of acquiring sanctity, of being made or becoming holy. And so uh, as you read the uh, First Thessalonians up there, um, we know how God wants us to act, right? And it's not always easy. But it's all part of the process of sanctification. The Bible says that God is holy, and there's times where it says he is holy, holy, holy. And when the Bible repeats something three times, it means you better sit up and take uh, a pretty good look at, at what it's saying. So the reason for sending Jesus was to deal with our sin, okay? But he wants us to live a life worthy of Jesus, and this can only happen with a life of purity, okay? The next one... Uh, as we're following our, bu our buoys out to uh, uh, open water, uh, which is God's will, is submission of being under authority. And why is this so important that God would add this to the Bible? Because, um, you know, there's critics out there everywhere. They're always looking for the gotcha moments. Um, every fault, whenever someone finds out you're a Christian, don't they give you a lot more scrutiny? Like they're waiting for you to do something wrong, right? And so it's always important for us to submit to, to the authority above us because 
That's what God, that's what God wants us to do. He, even if it's uh, hard to do sometimes. I mean, I'm, I'm married to a Cajun girl. So <laughs> I understand this. Okay? <laughs> so it, it, it is important. But there is one thing in the Bible that when it took... Um, that, that has told us before that there's an exception for not submitting to authority. And did we put that one up there too? It's when they told them not to speak or teach about Jesus. And they said, nah, we're not going to follow that one. Okay? So that's the one time when it says that uh, uh, not submitting to authority is okay. Uh, and if you've seen some... I was trying to think of the movie where guys were supposed to follow authority and, and they did and it was something bad happened. That, that's something that uh, you shouldn't do either. So there's, there are, I guess there are times when you shouldn't submit to, uh, to authority. Okay? But, uh, and then the next one and the last one is to, uh, to suffer. Uh, facing flack. And if you are a Christian today, you're going to get some of that. So it is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than evil, right? Does that make sense to you? But I love this last one. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ, Jesus will be persecuted. That's emphatic. It's not maybe, but it's, it will, right? So you have to kind of ask yourself, if Christianity was illegal, and someday it may come to that point, would there be enough evidence to convict you. What do you think? You have to kind of think about that a little bit. And, 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 and a lot of this that goes back to the buoys of, of how that you operate in your life. Okay? So the last buoy is the one of uh, suffering. So when you get down to the end of it, and, and I start trying to answer your question of, who does God say that I should marry? What job should I take? Okay? If you are following the buoys of salvation, you've given your life to Christ, you're living a spirit-filled life, you're working on your sanctification, you're under authority, and you are putting yourself out there for Christ in the suffering sphere, uh, facing the flat, it's, it's, it's kind of different, but... When you start asking yourself all those questions, and everything gets thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you, and then that last song, one is delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So that's kind of the answer. The answer is, if you are following the the buoys out to God's will, then the question of who should you marry, what job should you take, is up to you doesn't matter to God because you're doing everything else right he trusts you to make the right decision and so as we make decisions in our life based on how we operate you will, you should never have a problem in that regard okay so it's 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 a little bit of a different message but everybody wanting to know God's will in your life Turn around, do a 180, and look at your life and make sure that you're following the, the rules that, that Christ has set for you in his word. Because every bit of this is, came out of the Bible. And if you're following God's will, then your decisions that you're going to make on a daily basis are not a problem either way. Okay? Do you, anybody have any questions? Hey, look. I have been all over in the... Uh, the short water with all the reefs and all that too. I've had a couple of boat wrecks in my life that uh, felt like it was Gilligan's Island for me. I've been stuck a lot of times and sometimes you just gotta get pulled back into the, the right direction, okay? I mean, nobody's perfect, especially me, I know that. But uh, it's, um, I think it's a process and I think God continues to teach me even, you know, uh, even, even as I live today, I, I learn something every day. You asked, like, the, the Christianity were illegal. Like, is there enough evidence to, to convince you? So, like, when, when did you start really taking it seriously, like, following the Lord? And, and what kind of makes you, in moments of doubt, like, stick with it? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I'm, I'm 54 years old. 
And years ago, uh, I think it was just after uh, or before Amanda and I got married, I was coaching at a small university. I was a head <coughs> coach. And this was back in the 90s. <laughs> so you guys know how college coaching is. It's, it's a tough business. And, and our football program was not doing well at the time. I was the head strength coach, and back then, I had all 18 programs to myself. I had like a couple of assistants and GAs to help me. And so I was not living for Christ. I was like in this cutthroat business, and I was like doing really well with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was doing just fine. The, t the coaching staff for our football uh, team were probably going to get fired. And I worried about them. Because, um, it, you know, at a small division, it, it's tough. It's tough to get a, another job. And we had a defensive back coach that used to come to my office every day. And he used to ask how I was doing. And I'm like, dude, I'm worried about you. You worried about me? I'm worried about you. You got a wife and kids. And, and he's like, man, I have a piece of Christ in me. Because I'm worried about your life. And, like, literally... It took a, a couple of, of weeks, but man, it smacked me right in the head because I grew up in the church, and I was like, man, I know this ain't right. And to see the peace that passes understanding, um, this guy's name is Ray Richards. I still talk to him today. It's been all these years later, and I still thank him every time I talk to him. Um, he actually gave me a Bible all those years ago, and... Um, and I've since given that Bible to someone else. And so it, that's, that's, that's kind of what got me back, is I saw the peace in his life, not caring what everybody else in the world thought he should be nervous and worried about. And God took care of him, and he's moved on, and, and he's doing well. But we, we kind of get caught up in the temporary things of life. Um, and... What really struck me was his peace, and, and I knew that was something I was missing. You know, and it could be, you know, your grades, you're worried about this, you're worried about that. He wasn't worried about anything. He was worried about me. You know what I mean? And that just, like, that changed my life. When somebody worries about you when they're having all the difficulty in their life, they should take up, sit up and take notice. So when you do that to someone else, it's very powerful, powerful, very much so. He cared about me. He loved me when I was really not very lovable. And he meant a lot to me and still does to this day. So. Anybody else? No? How do you keep Jesus first in the weight room? <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, I have some rules in the weight room, like there's no foul language, and I've had to do push-ups myself. <laughs> you know, I tell them I get down on that thing you call a chest. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, th that's one of the main things is I let teams know when they come in that, we don't, we don't do things like that. And I kind of, I think you got to kind of be a little bit careful how you operate a little bit in, in, a, in a setting. Um, but I, I think, you know, hey, look, um, if we could just clean our language up, then I think it, uh, th that would mean a lot. I've had people tell me before, uh, they see, you know, I ride my Harley here and there, and they say, oh, when I first met this boy all the time, he, he, all he did was cuss. He noticed I didn't cuss finally one day, and he said something about it. I was like, yeah, because I'm a church guy, man. He goes, man, I am too. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> so I, I think clean your language up, you know, and, and you know, try to, try to follow the, the rest of the being spirit-filled. If you can, if there's, not, there's no law against being spirit-filled, right? If people can see it on you, it won't take long. So... Spirit filled, and, and, and if you can do that, it helps. Now, that, I'm not saying my patients don't get tried now. I am a strength coach. And so I get paid to yell and, and make people do uncomfortable things. 
So I, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of <laughs> it kind of bothers me a little bit, but not too much. Tom? Kind of following up on that, would you say, I'm not asking you to pat yourself on the back, so if you know, I will, but would you say there's anybody on, on your team who would be surprised if you're a Christian? Uh, in other words, he's saying, how do you keep Christ first? No, I, I, th I think they all know where I'm coming from. Um, I, I, I think that they see my humanity. <laughs> and, and they do. And, and you know what? And I've thought about this recently, too. Is I've got to tell my guys I love them more. I really do. Because as unlovable as I've been at times, they are, too. But love is more than, than just a feeling, right? So I, I care about those guys, all of them. So. Love you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so I have a question for you. Where do you get hung up on your on your path to God's will? <coughs> which which buoy do you get stuck on? Anybody? To start with, is anybody stuck on the first one? Because if not, we can take care of that right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just say it anyways. What's that? How do you get saved? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you say Christ. Man, I'm, I've done nothing but sin my whole life. Jesus, and we're getting ready to celebrate it on Sunday. Put him in the grave, and the grave couldn't hold him. Right? <laughs> So that's the kind of guy I want, like standing behind me. So think about it though. Where, where do you get hung up on your on your uh, path to, to following Christ? And you know, these are everybody should get. I mean, I've still get. I, I circle around. You know what I mean? I'm like the guy with one oar in the water. You just make circles. <laughs> and so. I get stuck all the time, and so I think it's it, it's still a process. You know what I mean? And I think God He gets it, man. He got a great sense of humor. I mean, look look at this. I mean, you look at this, I'm up here wearing a, a a mic without any hair. So, um, but anyway, um, think about what what where you get where you get stuck, and uh, pray about it, man. Have some people that. Uh, they go through life with you, pray about it. And that, that's always helpful. That's always helpful to attack it. Right? All right. Thank you very much.